Hello and welcome to Penn's Pals. I'm Miss Camila. And I'm Miss Dawn. And we're all here with Pennington, our pal. And we are all Penn's Pals. Do you see what Penn's wearing on his head? Dakota, what is it? A Christmas hat. It's a Christmas hat. Why do you think Penn is wearing a Christmas hat? Maya. Um, because it, it, it's almost winter. It is almost winter, and this is a very special time of year. During this time of year, we have lots of special holidays. Do you know what holidays we have during this time of year? Let me tell you something. What Christmas? We have Christmas. Are there any other holidays that we have? Yeah. We have Hanukkah. We also have Kwanzaa, and on all of these special holidays, people give presents, and they get presents. Have you ever given a present to someone? Yes. Yes? What is the best present that you have ever given to like someone? Right? Uh, like what's the best yeah, present? A bookmark to my mom. How about any of other you? Did you ever give somebody a really special present? Mm -hmm. What did you give? A big kiss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a special present. Baby Colin. To baby Colin. To baby Colin. That's really special. Did you ever get a really special present? Did somebody give you something? Yeah. Michael. Hard-boiled egg. A hard-boiled egg? That is a special no, present. No, it was a hard-boiled egg kit. Oh, I like that. Hard-boiled egg kit. Well, how do you giving a present to somebody, how does that make them feel? Happy. Happy. Cool. Happy. Is that what you were going to say? I was going to say that. Yeah, it makes them feel really special and happy. Well, today, Penn has also brought a very special guest with him today, and we're going to read a story about Christmas. It's, well, I know who it is, Tyrannoclaus. You are right. It is called, our book is called Tyrannoclaus, but we have a special guest besides Penn in our studio, and we'd like to welcome our guest, Janet Lawler, who is the author of Tyrannoclaus and many other books. And I'm very excited to welcome you, Janet. I've read all your books, but I'm especially excited that you would share Tyrannoclaus with us. So welcome. Well, thank you. I'm very excited to be here and to read and share my book with all of the boys and girls today. Can we all say welcome? Well say welcome, welcome, Janet. Welcome. So I thought I would start today by having you look at the cover of my book, because I think... Why are two of them? Well, we put one there so everybody could look at it ahead of time, and then this is the one I'm going to read from, but it's the same book. So can you tell yeah, no, by no. looking at the cover? Yeah. Raise your hands what this might be about. James, what do you think? Um, the Tyrannoclaus and Lion. A uh -huh. Tyrannoclaus flying. Tyrannoclaus flying. What do you think? Tyrannosaurus. Santa. That's right. And how can you tell he's a Santa? <laughs> My mom's the hat. He has a hat on. Just like Penn, right? Has a hat on. Dakota, you have any thoughts? Because he has a beard. He has a beard, too, just like Santa. Okay, you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to read the story to you, okay? One more thing I'll tell you. Maybe he gives away dinosaur presents. Maybe okay. he does. Yes, maybe he does. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and too. And while we listen to storybooks, Mom, sure. can you guys put your hands on your lap? Ready? And sing after me. It's time to read a book. It's time to read a book. One, two, three. Listen, listen. Shh. Thank you. Thank you. Twas the night before Christmas in Dinosaur Land. Tyrannoclaus hurried, his helpers at hand. They gathered up treats and created new toys for Stegosaur girls and Apatosaur boys, for the meat eaters, bones that were tasty to chew, for plant eaters, leaves that were tender and new. A sleeping volcano was called the North Pole. A workshop tucked into its deep crater bowl. Tyrannoclaus labored till late Christmas Eve, wrapping up presents for those who believed. But baby pteranodon wings were still flapping. Tiny triceratops wouldn't start napping 
The swamps weren't sleepy, for no one could wait. For dear old Tyrannoclaus, would he be late? As dawn was approaching, the youngsters all snored. While dreaming of goodies, they rumbled and roared. Can you rumble and roar like a dinosaur? <laughs> if you were snoring, what might you sound like? <laughs> <laughs> but back in the workshop, big trouble had started. The sleigh was half empty. It should have departed. Tyrannoclaus bellowed, where can my list be? The dinosaur children are counting on me. A herbivore helper had nibbled the list. He thought that his little snack wouldn't be missed. Do you know what a herbivore eats? What? what? Plants. Plants. And what is paper made out of? Plants. So he was nibbling the list because he was hungry. They taped up the pieces. The presents were packed. But under the sleigh, the earth trembled and cracked and three sacks of toys tumbled down off the side, right into a crevice that split open wide. By dropping a res rescue rope made from a, a vine, they pulled up the gifts, and the bags were all fine. Yes. Quickly, Tyrannoclaus cried, let's get going. Then off flew his hat. A hot breeze was now blowing. One of his helpers swooped up in a flash and dove down like a comet through thickening ash. And just as Tyrannoclaus shouted, away, a blast rocked the ground and he tipped with a sleigh. The mountain erupted, Tyrannoclaus stopped. The sleigh stuck in lava that sizzled and popped. His beard singed with embers he tried to push off. His eyes began stinging, he started to cough. <laughs> Tyrannoclaus yelled to his dinosaur team to plunge through the fire, the smoke, and the steam. On Raptor, on Rexy, on Mimus and Saurus. Oh, please, pull us through all the dangers before us. Can you say that with me? On Raptor, on Rexy, on Mimus and Saurus. Oh, please, pull us through all the dangers before us. They strained and they snorted while dripping with sweat to break from the lava before it could set. With one final effort, at last they pulled free, soared up past the crater, beyond every tree. They circled the earth and they stopped at each nest, delivering presents without any rest. Tyrannoclus wore a big smile on his face, rushing to reach every dinosaur's place, those high on a hilltop, those under a log, those in between rocks in the back of a bog. The toy sacks were empty as daylight appeared. The sleigh headed north while Tyrannoclaus steered. He called, Merry Christmas! And as he flew by, he heard oohs and ahs floating up through the sky from dinosaur children so happy below, so giddy and gleeful with eyes all aglow. They picked up their treasures and ran out to play on Christmas, the very best dinosaur day. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Have any of you ever thought about maybe being a dinosaur? Yeah? I thought we might play a little bit of a game today. Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll talk a little bit about how I came up with the idea for this story. Which would you like to do first, the game? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do, I have a contest on my website where you can write a letter to Tyrannoclaus, and we're going to play a little bit of that today. So close your eyes for just a second and pretend you're a dinosaur. Think about what dinosaur you might be, and then we're going to pretend that you're a little dinosaur at Christmas time. Okay, open your eyes. Somebody raise your hand and tell me what kind of dinosaur you want to be. Yes? Dinosaur Rex. You want to be a T-Rex. Okay. So if you were a T-Rex, a little T-Rex dinosaur boy, what would you write to Santa? What would you write to Tyrannoclaus and say how you've been a good T-Rex boy this year? You're going to send him a present. You're going to send Tyrannoclaus a present. What a nice idea. I think Tyrannoclaus would like that a lot. 
And what would you like for a present if you were a little, maybe some bones that are like Legos that you could stack together and make things? A bone that you could eat? That's terrific. I think that would be a good present for you. I think that would be a great present for you. How about you, Maya? What kind of dinosaur would you like to be? Flying dinosaur. A flying dinosaur. That's a pteranodon, maybe? Yeah, that's one of my favorites, too. They like to do. They fly. Maybe you would like to have some decorations for your wings, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that would be cute. Maybe <laughs> something sparkly. Huh? Okay, you know what? I'm going to show you a little bit about how I came up with my story and some of the ideas that I had when I was writing it. When I first started thinking about it, my son Andy was five. Is anybody here five years old? You're five, okay. Well, my son was your age when I wrote this story. And do you know how old he was when my book was finally published? You don't know, I'll tell you. He was 21. Whoa. Whoa. Yes, so I call this my prehistoric manuscript <laughs> for more than one reason. It mm -hmm. took a long time to get published. My first idea for this story was, was written in scribbles. Can you see these scribbles? Mm -hmm. This was my first story. Do you ever have ideas for stories? Do you ever write stories? Well, I started this way, and then I kept thinking this was long, long ago before Santa. There was Santasaurus. Is that the name of my book, Santasaurus? No. no. What do you think happened? I had, to, I had to make a change, but first I'll show you my first version of Santasaurus. Look at this. Does it look the same? I made a little book because Andy, who is my son, he needed to see some pictures. So look at my pictures. See my pictures? Do they look like the pictures in my book? No. 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 John Schroeds is the illustrator of my book. And you know what the illustrator does? What does the illustrator do? My book. Christina, do you know what the illustrator does? Does the pictures. Right, so John Schroeds did the illustrations in my book. But I drew these, and you can see why the publisher picked John Schroeds instead <laughs> of me. Because I'm much better at writing a story than drawing pictures. But I tried. So then I had some ideas for toys. And right at the beginning, I had a Bronto bat. And for the babies, I had Tyranno teethers. But what happened a year after I wrote this? I went to a bookstore, and look what I saw. <gasps> Santasaurus. Somebody else wrote a book with the same title of my book, and it had a lot of words in it, a lot more words than my stories. And it wasn't the same story, but it was the same name, so I was worried about it. So I put my story into a drawer until I finally came up with the name Tyrannoclaus. And then I kind of started all over again, because Santasaurus doesn't sound the same as Tyrannoclaus. You know how words rhyme? Have you been working at all at school about words that sound the same at the end? Have you? I'm going to read one line and I want you to tell me if you can find other words that maybe sound the same at the end. For meat eaters, bones that were tasty to chew. For plant eaters, leaves that were tender and new. So hear the word Chew, chew and hear the word new. How about another word? Me. That, that sounds like chew or new. That rhymes. How about what color is my sweater? Blue. <gasps> blue. 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 That's right. Any other ideas? <laughs> yes. Shoe. Shoe. Yeah, that's terrific. Me. How about something we use downstairs to put to put the pictures to stick something together? Paint. Glue. 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 And when something, when you're telling something that isn't a lie, you're telling something that is true. So those are rhyming words, and I like to use rhyming words in my book. Well, we thank you for sharing that with us. Well, boys and girls, do you know the song Jingle Bells? Yes. Can we sing it together? And then we're going to sing a Tyrannoclaus to the tune of Jingle Bells. Are you ready? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. 
Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Very good. I'm going to teach you a new song. Are you ready to learn? And it's just like Jingle Bells, but it has everything to do with Tyrannosaurus to Tyrannoclaus. And when we get to Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, it's in Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus. Can you sing that? Ready? Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus. One more time. Ready? Good practice. Ready? Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus. Yes, Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus. Very good. So you know your part. Here's the rest. You ready? Tyrannoclaus, we love your smile of snowy big white teeth. We see them shining down on us while snuggled down beneath. As over all our nests and homes you fly on Christmas Eve, delivering your packages to dinos who believe. Ready? In Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus. Yes, Tyrannoclaus, Tyrannoclaus. If you like to make crafts, you do. Well, Miss Camilla is going to show you how to make a Tyranna Claus puppet. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. All right, boys and girls at home and here in our studio, this is what all the material we'll need. We need a brown paper bag. We need scissors. We need cotton balls markers, crayons, and some glue. And today we're going to be making Tyrannoclaus Puppet. See, we could put our hand in and he could talk to us, say hi everyone. He could sing Tyrannoclaus. He could. <laughs> so let's try to make him. So if we start off with this, what do you think we need to do first? Scissors. No, we need to color him. What color should we make him? Green. Maya. Green and red. Green and red. All right. So can let's. I, can I ask a question? Yes. Please. Does anybody really know what color the dinosaurs were? We don't, do we? Because what do we have from dinosaur time? Well, I thought it was a crab. We just have bones, right? Awesome. So you could use any color you want. That's right. Really? That's it would be true. a lot of fun. It would. Polka be. dots. You could make your dinosaur with polka dots. Yeah. Should I make him with polka dots? No. I like no. No. <laughs> I like, I like <laughs> green and red. <laughs> James no. says no. All right, so we'll Stripe. color him. Color. So we color that nicely. So we color his face. You know you're going to redo this too. Mm -hmm. Color his face. Yes, All right, so, so we're, I'm going to pretend that I colored the whole thing nice and neat. What else? Now what do I need to do? What do you think comes next? Color the hat. The hat. I forgot the hat. <laughs> so I'm coloring right in the lines because it's it's good to color neatly, not sloppy, right? <laughs> we do our best. <laughs> I am kind of doing a little bit sloppy. You're right, Eric. So I'm trying to do it quickly. We're pretending that this is nice and neat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now he's all colored in. What do I do next? Maya. Cut it. Cut it. Cut him. Do you use big scissors or little scissors? Little. Little scissors. Right. And we might need mom or dad to help us cut him. And we stay right on the lines. But do we put our fingers near the scissors? No. No, it's very dangerous. Then you could be dead. <laughs> then you could be cut. Or you could get hurt, right? Yeah, you can get hurt. So we have to be careful. Cutting him out nicely. Gotta go quicker, huh? And if you have trouble cutting, who do you ask to help you? Mom and Dad. Mom or Dad. Dad. Or your grandma, or your babysitter, or your teacher. Or me. Or your grandma or papa. Yeah. Or your grandma or papa, yep. That's right. And they're all big people, right? Yeah. yeah. You ask them to help you. And now, very important part, boys and girls. It's a glue? 
So we can put, the, do we just leave this on the table? Mm -hmm. What do we do with this part? Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. So what we need to do now is I actually cut the bottom of his face right off. <gasps> right on his mouth. What's he going to do now? He has to glue. He's got two parts. We have to glue That's him. Right. So we can glue his head on the top. Now, does it matter which side of the bag we use, Miss Camila? Yes, it does. We need to use the side that has the flap open. So we put it right on this side, just like this. We just put a little bit of glue. Just a little bit. That's the bad side, glue. And do you want to go over the flap? No, we do not go over the flap. That, ha that has to still be open. What goes on the bottom? The mouth. The mouth, that's right. Mouth. So we'll just put a little bit of glue. <laughs> and then we can put the mouth right on. Otherwise he wouldn't be able to talk, would he? Uh, now we have, oh. he can open. Right, and then the next thing that we do, we can put cotton. cotton Thank you, James. And what do you think the cotton balls are for? The Maya. Beard. The beard and the and the top of his hat. That's right. Ready? James, would you like to put a little bit of glue right there? Yes, it is. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. So James helped us with that. And then I'll put some glue right across here. We can put all of the other cotton balls. Remember he needs a beard too, I think. Yes, he does. Yeah, you can put any kind of ball you want on it. There's only two more left. Just two. Just, Just two, two right there. there yeah. And then we could put some down here for his beard. Yep. Right there. But we only Eight. have one ball of the two. That goes there. And we have one there. And, the one, and one right one, there. We have one more. If we need oh. that one. Nope. I think that's attached hat. to his yeah. hat. And then, voila! We have Tyrannoclaws. There's no more. <laughs> There's no more. All right. Thank you, James. You can have a seat now. Um, Happy holidays from Penn's Pals.